Our dicks are stuck inside the game machine. Super Fuckers! Everybody wishes they could be. Super Fuckers! Here we come! Make a bow! Everybody fucking run and hide! What's up, guys? Welcome to the Nerd Talk Podcast. Nerdy talk for nerdy fans. I'm your host, Remington Kaiser. We got an amazing cast of uh, guests here today. Joining me today is Aiden Kais. Say hello to everyone, Aiden. Hey guys, what's up? And our very, very special guest, um, John Dilworth, the creator of Courage the Cowardly Dog. Hello, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, This is going to be our Halloween special, so um, we invited the creator of Courage the Cowardly Dog. It seemed very appropriate for our Halloween special. He's uh, our fifth guest this season on the show, so I'm really excited to have him on here. Be very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, some questions before we get into the viewer-submitted questions to ask you. Um, what made you get into animation? Uh, a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Did anything, like, inspire you to, like, you know, just... Get in there. Do I need that? <laughs> <laughs> it usually helps. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rim Dog, you know how it rolls. You love something, you do it. You don't have yeah. to talk about it. You don't need inspiration. Inspiration. Inspiration is like jumping out of the way of an elephant that's running towards you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird expression. Yeah, but it's for nerds. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't know that? <laughs> I mean, I'm, you don't have elephants running down the street where you are? Oh, of course I do. Who no, does? Like, that happens every morning. Oh, there it is. There it <laughs> is. Uh, what made you bring Courage the Cowardly Dog to Cartoon Network? You know, we're all kind of curious. You know, of all the networks to pitch it to, what made, what made Cartoon Network so special? Oh, well, that's super easy. Um, uh Back in the 90s, this cat, Fred Seibert, was running a program out of Hanna-Barbera um, doing shorts. And they were produ he was producing a lot of great shorts. Mm -hmm. And I was making an independent film called The Chicken from Outer Space. And I had just come out of, I was just rolling out of the Dirty Birdie and I was broke. Because I had funded that all myself and I was still paying it off. So my next film, I needed a little bit of help. So here comes um, this program. And uh, uh, they come around to take a look at the dirty birdie, but uh, they found that the, the expression of the bird a little too offensive for their, <laughs> their audiences. So I pitched them this other thing, you know, the chicken from outer space. Yeah. And eventually that went on uh, uh, to become a series. But the thing is, is that Hanna Barbera folded and Cartoon Network was just beginning. Yeah. So it was all about timing for me. And um, and luck, and I had a had a couple of great supporters, Linda Siminski and Mike Lazo. Mm -hmm. um, and they were there from the very beginning, and uh, they just you know, despite my bad attitude, they 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 kind of supported. Me. I'm now that that's very similar to a lot of the car early Cartoon Network shows stories. You know, a lot of like Dexter's Lab would. Uh, yeah, Dexter's Lab came out of that eight, uh, What a Cartoon. Yeah, that. One of the early Cartoon Network shows, uh, the Icon icon ones, right? Yeah. Uh, they came right out of that program. The cartoon cartoons from the Friday yeah, block, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was on Fridays. Yeah. I mean, I, it's been such a part of, a staple of, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, you know, kids memories i mean even i watched it as a kid with my parents and we used to sit down and watch all the time like i wrote on your facebook one day i honestly thought you based eustace off my father you know because <laughs> just very very similar <laughs> it's amazing the universal uh qualities of of this personality um i i wasn't aware that i was tapping into it yeah Comes, it just came through. <laughs> and all I knew for real reference was myself. What, like, how did you think of the personalities for each character? Uh, they, uh, like everything, well, a lot of the good stuff.
stuff in life is a mashup. Mm, yeah. Different people you meet, you know, the things in your life, uh, the qualities that you are you are attracted to. It's all a mashup. Yeah. Look yeah. at us. We're a mashup. Four million years of mashing up of hominids to get to where we are now. Yeah. Okay. Archie Spires asks, were the monsters real in Courage the Cowardly Dog, or was it just the way Courage saw the world? What do you mean? Why Courage? I saw the world like that. <laughs> monsters everywhere? <laughs> monsters are everywhere! <laughs> <laughs> and you're like a pink dog <laughs> compared to everybody. Hey man, that's fuchsia, not pink. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Osman asks, what inspired you to make the show? A pencil! <laughs> <laughs> I answered this question already. Thomas Thomas Davis asks, what was Eustace based on a grumpy father figure of yours? Well, there's a re yeah, we see above, you know. We answered this question already. Yeah. Oh. Everyone, a lot of people were asking similar questions. <laughs> about Eustace. Maybe there is something about the apathetic cruelty of our current, uh, you know, society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm seeking some, some, some insight into, maybe perhaps for an understanding, maybe for an immunity, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, inoculation. Mm hmm I don't know. I don't have to answer this. Uh, you could just think of you could think of Joseph Campbell, his anthropologist, philosopher. He just went off saying that evil was always evil, evil was part of this world from the very beginning. Yeah. Our job is to possibly show how we could live with it. Exactly. Yeah. Carrie Joyce Frost asks, whatever happened to Freaky Fred? Did he ever get out again, or is he still naughty? Come on, cats like this are either in politics or they're incarcerated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a fan favor I know, Freaky Fred. He was one of the creepiest things I've seen out of the show. You know, Freaky Fred was, uh, was um, inspired by my love of the, the Dr. Seuss uh, rhymes. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, I love that. I wanted to do uh, an episode where it was all in rhyme. And so I hit my head writer, David Cohen, who had been doing some Dr. Seuss stuff for, I don't know, one of the preschool sh uh, networks. Yeah. And he was game. And, we, you know, you know, it gets through our hands, and it turns into Freaky Fred. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the suits to Freaky Fred. Cat in the hat to Freaky Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Adriana Salazar asks, I'd really like to know the story behind King Ramsey's song. Oh, well, you're going to get that when I post my special features commentary on King Ramsey's curse on True. Halloween Eve. And huh? perhaps this is a good time to, uh, to uh, notify your audience and, and and viewers or, or ear, ears uh, to go to my YouTube Stretch Films channel for a special bulletin announcing the who, what, when, and how. And it's going to be really funky because you're going to have to get your own copy of King Ramsey's Curse. Which and you then we'll, we'll, we'll instruct you on how to sync it to my audio. And you play them both. And that's how we will do this experiment. Well, see, they could buy the, all the episodes with the complete series that Cartoon Network released. Yeah, <laughs> no, but listen, uh, we don't have the special features. All four videos, all four seasons are out now. Yeah. And there's not, there's no special features. So Uncle Dilly will make an attempt to do special features for you. Do we have to start calling you Uncle Dilly now? Well, what am I going to do? <laughs> I can't be Aunt Dilly. That's Although true. when I was a counselor in camp, sleepaway camp, when I was a lad, I was in charge of these boys, and they called me Grandma. Grandma? What the? <laughs> grandma. <laughs> okay, boys, let's go. We have to get up to breakfast. Okay, Grandma. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm Grandma. Big deal. 
Is he back at band camp? <laughs> bad camp? That's bad nice. Camp. That's, yeah, that's funny. Bad camp. <laughs> Cassandra Harris asks, why did they allow Courage to start talking in later episodes? Cassandra, huh? Yeah. With a name like that, how come she doesn't know already the answer? <laughs> She has two questions, actually. That was one, and the second one oh, was... That's a really great question. I think it has something to do with... Um, I was going for a real... I don't know, a, a, a juicy accent. Yeah. Voice. Um, maybe it was too regional. I don't know. <laughs> but the dog does work better, and this wasn't my idea. This was, this was uh, Mike Lazo's idea and his team at Cartoon Network. And I think they're absolutely right. They were right. Yeah. And my instincts were not to not to have him speak that often. But we were, you know, they were very cool. You know, in the beginning, it was always it was always like several half hours into the first season of a new show that you're permitted to experiment because the network also wants to find out what works. Yeah. And doesn't work. So one of the things that came up was let's not have courage talk. I mean, that's fine with me because then I invented the babble and yeah. the mad screams. And then Marty Grabstein, who looks like courage. I mean, I cast Marty because mm -hmm. his eyebrows went up at the right 45 <laughs> degree angle of courage. And I said, okay, man, you don't have to talk much. You just have to do all sorts of vocal effects. And he was great. <laughs> he one time did a three minute scream in one breath. Wow. Yeah, at the That's end of, of this villain episode, where all Courage's villains were, they were playing dodgeball or something. And in the end, Courage just screams. This is Marty screaming forever. And it was amazing. That, that episode is always on the top ten list for other YouTubers. I always see that episode on top ten lists all the time. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe it's because they like to see women hung in basements. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I know I do. <laughs> That's the biggest nerd thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why it's called the Nerd Talk Podcast. <laughs> that was the Halloween issue. <laughs> Elijah Furtado asks, "What's your personal favorite episode?" How can I have? How can I favor my thumb over my pinky, my big toe over my knee? <laughs> Uh, you follow? Yeah. <laughs> I need them all. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Need them? I know my favorite episode, or ep ep yeah, episode is definitely anyone that um the cat comes in. What's his name? Or was cats. it a fox? Yeah, cat. Uh, cat is my baby. <laughs> my cat is cat is rooted, rooted in the my first and only cat. His name was Swabby Dodd. I named him Swabby Dodd, looking at a toilet tissue ad in the New York City subway. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it means soft. And, and Swabby Dodd was great. I lived with him 11 years. And uh, I had a great time. And he inspired a lot of characters. Lily Laney, there's a cat. Noodles and Ned, Noodles is a cat. Mm -hmm. Courage has a part of the mashup many qualities of my cats while they die. Hmm. Cats, this villain, he is an uh, ancestor, right, of Suavidad, my cat. Yeah. So, you know, to answer those questions about inspiration for your, your fans and audience, inspiration, you don't look for it. You feel it. It just happens. You know, you know it. It's in you. If it's in you, you can bring it out. Man, I'm not talking, you know, psycho babble, mysticism, alchemy, black magic, whatever. <laughs> We're talking consciousness. Yeah. Are we not alive? Wow, that's deep. No, <laughs> man, that's nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the show. No, <laughs> and that's the show. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> well, we have, we have two I, final questions before the show's I, I, over. Uh, no. our, our, our second to last question before we get to the final question, Sam Morano asks, with the return of Powerpuff Girls, is there any chance of a similar comeback for Courage? 
considering you did that short a few years ago. Yeah, I don't know anything about what these cats are doing over in L.A. Yeah. But I don't think they're, I don't know, I doubt whether they're they're behind this pink pooch. Well, you never know. They're, from what I hear, the folks at Cartoon Network are looking for stuff for merchant, that are merchandisable. I definitely think Courage the Cowardly Dog is merchandisable, you know. Well, let's hope so. Go out and buy all that you can. Yeah, go support Courage the Coward the Dog, people. Let's let's get them back. Let's make a fan base. You know, of course I'm thrilled, but uh, we really need to... Really. Um, yeah. I mean, the, look at the world. We need we need real courage. Yeah. Not, not virtual courage. Mm, yeah. Okay, what's this last question? Because i got to plug my goose and heels. <laughs> Jennifer O'Brien asks, what are your thoughts on the Courage the Cowardly Dog fan theory? What? Which one? I get hundreds of them. The one where he's Serb <laughs> Serbius. Or Ser he is, he's a Serbian? Serbius from like the Greek myths Serbian. and stuff. Serbius? Oh, dog of the... That's a story. I would do that as a story. Are you kidding? <laughs> I would do that. Of course. Let's say... Let's say, uh, okay, let's write one where Courage has to play the role of the dog that, that protects the gates of uh, Tartarus. Yeah. And um, Hades is Eustace. And let's say Muriel croaks. You know, but it's a mistake. Yeah. And uh, she goes down there. I don't know. You, I could see Courage playing the dog. <coughs> that is nerdy. What kind of show is this? <laughs> it's the nerd show. Dun dun dun! <laughs> <laughs> but I can totally see that working as an episode. I want that episode now. Now we—that's going to be the next Courage reboot, right there. <laughs> um, what, what's that? Is there another question or? Oh no, that's the final about? question. Um. Well, look, I'm working on a film. I want all your cats to pay attention to this. Go to my YouTube channel, Stretch Films, and look at my process videos. I get in deep and sexy and intimate with my process animating this new film. And um, it's going to, I don't know what's going to, I really don't know what to tell you about it. You can make your own, you can make your own instincts about it when you see the process videos. Um, Goose and High Heels will be out in 2017. It's yeah. a long piece, 20 minutes, and I am I live for this. This is all I get out of bed for, is to animate this movie. I love it, and I'm pouring everything into it, trying new things, absolutely new ways of moving. I, I really, if you think about reasons to live, mm -hmm. I'm so happy to die at my desk animating. So that's an animator's is. dream right there. Brothers and sisters. Or anybody's dream. You know, Possibly even, these, a nerd. even these sociopaths, psychopaths. I mean, imagine, to be fair, we, we don't approve, of course, but villains, evil, evil cats like Eustace, they, you know, they got to, right? They get off on being evil. Yeah. Look at Dr. Look at Dr. Jalost. Jalost, he couldn't be happy unless everybody around them is sad. Exactly. And then you have the commentary coming up, too. So, uh, both... Yeah, that's Halloween. Halloween. Ramsey's Curse. Make sure everyone listening gets a copy of King Ramsey's Curse and gets to watch his commentary on King Ramsey's Curse on Halloween. It'll be released. Link will be in the description below to both um, his YouTube channel, the film, the commentary, when it's up. You'll be able to check it out here on the description below. Anything else uh, you want to plug before I we go? I want everybody to be happy as best that they can and make other lives happy. That's, <laughs> that's my last thing. It's been a real pleasure having you. You know, we we I've been really waiting all year to ask you to come on the show, and nothing you know makes me happier than have you know some some what well, I would call my childhood heroes who created some of the greatest things that help my childhood out. Um, well, that really makes me feel great. You know, the things we do for love. 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, because that's what he says in the show. <laughs> I get it. I actually have the first season on DVD. It's pretty good. All right. It doesn't have any special features. No. No, no special no, features. <laughs> But yeah, that's the Nerd Talk Podcast. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, any last words, you know, a little nerdy things you have to say to the nerdy viewers? Well, everything I've been saying has been nerdy. <laughs> hey, and that's the Nerd Show. So thank you guys for watching. Where hey, can uh, my John, fans find you? Tell, yeah, John, tell my fans where they might find you at on these interwebs. interwebs. Uncle Dilly. Uncle Dilly. <laughs> uh, well, I have, a face, I have Facebook, I have uh, YouTube. Those are the places you can go to my you can go to my my massively neglected website. Send me some emails. Is it as is it as bad as uh, the creator of Angry Beavers website that hasn't been updated since nineteen ninety eight? No, I've just been really occupied, and uh, no, maybe it's a couple of years outside the curve, outside neglect. But I've been building the channel and feeding the Facebook. Uh, appetite, you know, fans, fans need courage. Exactly. Who who doesn't yeah. want courage? <laughs> the, the things we do for love. And, that, and that's well said. Aiden, where can the fans find you? You can find me at www.therugratsaredead.com and you can also find me on YouTube at The Reviewing Kingdom. And you can find me on all the social media sites under Remington Kai's or Remdog105. Thank you for having me on. It's been an extreme pleasure. Oh, thanks for coming. Happy thanks. holidays. Thanks for coming. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out, y'all. Stupid dog!